Ricky Smiley Morning Show, the most funny in the morning. morning. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Just another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God is good all the time and all the time. God yeah, right. is good. Pastor Haynes, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ricky Smiley. God bless you. Love you so much, bro. Thank God for you and the Ricky Smiley Morning Show family. Man, every day, get my day started off beautifully. Listen, today's song, of course, is that classic by the amazing Kirk Franklin, Hosanna. Hosanna, I love this song so much, Rick. There's an amazing line in the song when Kirk talks about because of the sacrifice that was paid by Christ, the Bible lets us know we have new life. Isn't it good to know that the old life doesn't get in the way of the new life God has in store for you? The good news is that God is more concerned with where you're going than where you've been. God is more concerned with what you can do than what you have have done. God is about blessing us with new life. That's why the Bible says if anyone is in Christ Jesus, they are new creations. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. It's so good to know that today is a new day. Since it's a new day, don't you allow what happened back then to get in the way of what God wants to do right now. God has plans for your life. God wants to ensure that you enjoy a new life, that you enjoy the freshness that God has in store for you. So whatever else you do, don't be down on yourself because of what happened in the past. God has possibilities and potential that God has impregnated your life with. Today is the day to give birth to what is brand new in God's plan for you. And so the good news is what Christ has done for you is to pave the way for a new life for you. So go ahead, celebrate the fact that today is a new day. Since it's a new day, embrace the new life that God has in store for you. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Hosanna, we worship you and we thank you for new life. Y'all enjoy this new life. And if someone says you acting brand new, tell them I am brand new. And I do have a new life because of what Christ has done for me. God bless you. Enjoy this brand new day. There it is, Pastor Haynes, man, the senior pastor of Princeton West Missionary Baptist Church. Let's get into this music. Love you, Pastor Haynes. Yes, Love you, Ricky. Have a great day. Yes, sir. You too. Let's go. News headlines. Entertainment. Sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, 21 minutes after the hour, got your front page right here. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, RSMS family, and happy Friday. Here's what's happening in news. The judge overseeing the Georgia election interference case against Donald Trump and his co-defendants is expected to issue a decision today on whether Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis will be disqualified from the case. Now, the highly anticipated ruling follows a months-long disqualification effort spearheaded by Trump and his co-defendants over allegations of misconduct against Willis, which she has fiercely denied. Of course, we know she's being accused of having a conflicting relationship with prosecutor Nathan Wade, who she hired for the Trump case. Meanwhile, Ricky, uh, President Joe Biden's top White House lawyer is encouraging House Speaker Mike Johnson to end his chamber's efforts to impeach the president over unproven claims that Biden benefited from the business dealings of his son and brother. Yeah, they really need to let that go. Uh, lastly, Mega Millions jackpot. It has grown to $792 million ahead of Friday tonight's drawing. We're going into St. Patrick's Day weekend. Maybe somebody will get lucky tonight. It is the sixth highest total ever. I'm Maria Moore, and those are a few of today's news stories. For updates and more headlines, go to rickysmileymorningshow.com. Brad, what you got coming up in the hot spot? Girl, coming up next in the hot spot, what is the American Society of Magical Negroes? I'm going to tell you about it up next. Oh. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. <laughs> the hot hot spot. spot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot. Yeah. Yeah, that's hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B-R-A-T. All right, 29. 29 after the hour. Y'all time for the hot spot. What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tat Tat. This is the hot spot, but we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. 
Arthur the King and the American Society of Magical Negroes will be coming to theaters this weekend. Arthur the King is a feel-good story about a man who befriends a wounded stray dog, which is projected to make 8 to $10 million. The American Society of Magical Negroes is a satirical comedy that takes a look inside an organization that exists to make life easier for white people. Kung Fu, Kung Fu, Kung Fu Panda 4 is expected to dominate again with roughly $28 million to $30 million in the second weekend and Doom Part 2 is projected to add 24 million to the 27 million during its third weekend of release. Wow, that is a lot. These movies are making a lot of money out here. All right, y'all, moving on. Dr. Dre is set to receive his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on Tuesday, March 19th. His star will live next to his longtime friend and collaborator, Snoop Dogg, in front of Jimmy Kimmel's studio. Snoop Dogg will also speak during the ceremony alongside Interscope Records co-founder Jimmy IV. The spokesperson for Hollywood Walk of Fame said Dr. Dre's compute contributions to the music industry are undeniable and have left an indelible mark on pop culture. He has continuously pushed boundaries and set new standards for excellence. It is with great pride that we honor his incredible career and extraordinary impact by awarding him a star on the Walk of Fame. So congratulations to you, Dr. Dre. Yes. Moving on, y'all. 50 Cent has called out Premium Spirits brand Beam Suntory over their alleged role in an embezzlement scheme that reportedly cost him millions in legal fees and almost ended his sire spirits company. 50 took to Instagram to warn the company that they will pay for what they did. And y'all know 50 Cent going to come after you until you pay. He continued, these big companies think that they can get away with anything. It will cost me millions in legal fees, but they're going to find out I'm not the one you want to play with i'm not the guy you want to get started in the nicest way i'm gonna need my money by monday <laughs> beef suntory is being accused of being complicit in a kickback scheme where it reportedly embezzled more than six million dollars from 50s uh sire spirits by overcharging it and the liquor brand is denying all claims of course in the statement saying beam suntory denies all allegations of wrongdoing it had no involvement in or knowledge of the fraudulent activity alleged in the compliant and any allegation to the contrary has no basis in fact it is undisputed that we honored all prior obligations to Mr. Jackson and Sire Spirits and it is very unfortunate that the parties involved continue to misrepresent the facts and misdirect blame in an attempt to recover fees and damages well damn what y'all think about that <laughs> Maria I mean <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> Asking me, I don't know. <laughs> Child, I just I be mean, trying to mind. I I just be trying to mind my business and make sure my bills are paid. Right. <laughs> and why are you so quiet, Gary? Because I'm just listening to this. I mean, Fifty Cent is. I mean, he is, okay, it's good that these people suing him and he feels that way. But honey, listen, you got to have a lot of money when you're going up against the system because these people got just as much money. So you could take your millions and go back to court with him. But look at Diddy, honey, he had to resign. So and that's his buddy, isn't it? Uh, that's definitely he not says a lot of stuff for show also, 50. You know, he just, yeah. he's saying stuff for if show. If you pay attention to social media, you know that Diddy is not 50's buddy. Right. At all. I know that. that's why I said it sarcastically. Oh, said, okay. we don't mess with you. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, Gary. All right, Gary, we're going to leave you alone. All right, y'all. We're going to wrap up the hot spot on that note. But coming up next, we got Rock T's HBC. You know the time now is 27 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Now you know. Hey, no. Hey, no. And if you don't know, now you know. HBC, you know? Oh, yeah, man. Yes, indeed. Feed the needy. <laughs> Rock Teasy in the house, man. It's time for another HBC, you know? Oh, we about to get ready to highlight another one of our heroes that attended another one of our fine historically black colleges and universities. That's right. Right out there in Maryland. That's right. Bowie State University, established in 1865, home of the black and gold bulldogs. Shout out to the SOS Symphony of Soul marching band. Oh, we about to talk about one of y'all's former students, Giovanna Depo. He's an actor known for his starring role as Corey Maxim in the film Fences alongside the great Denzel Washington. Tell you about this young brother right here. So many other projects he was a part of. Overlord, 
when they see us. Jack Ryan, sorry for your loss. The Leftovers. He even played Lionel Jefferson in the CBS All in the Family, the Jefferson Special. Nominated for the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Limited Series or Movie. Oh, by the way, he received his bachelor degree in political science and philosophy from the great Bowie State University. Another one of our proud HBCU alums, Javon Adepo. If you didn't know, now you know. If you want me to highlight your favorite HBCU, hit me up on my social media platforms at Rock T Holla. Let's get it. HBCU no. Man, appreciate that, Rock T. We love celebrating our HBCU grass. Brat, what you got coming up next? Coming up next, a woman in Vegas snitched on a groom in Vegas for doing this. We'll find out what happened up next on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, 13 minutes before the top of the hour. Brat, what you got? Let me tell you what I got. A TikTok, a TikTok influencer reported that a man cheated on his bride-to-be during his Vegas bachelor party. Now, should you mind your business or should you say something? Tiana Waltshire claimed that the man cheated on his fiance in Las Vegas. She said if your fiance just went on his bachelor trip to Las Vegas and was at the MGM Wet Republic pool yesterday, then he cheated on you. I saw it. I saw I went to test the waters because I wanted to find out his Instagram so I could DM you and and went over and he was super flirty and I said oh you the one getting married and he said um su- supposedly something like that while many supported her posting the video clip others began hunting for the man who many believed that his name was Matt Adams Matt's fiance said it wasn't him and that her fiance had not been to Vegas and would never cheat uh, she also had to disable her wedding website after a flood of strangers RSVP while others applauded her for sharing what happened Others started shaming the woman, saying she that she should have just minded her own business. What y'all think? Of course, she should have minded her business. That was that was horrible, ruining ruining that man's uh uh wedding. Even if he did do, even if you saw something like that, unless that's your friend, that ain't got nothing to do with you. Well, and I they ain't married yet, that. so he ain't cheating. Yeah, he's cheating, honey. He's no, he's not going to get married. He's supposed to get married the next day. Okay, so he's getting out of so. getting it out of the system. Yeah, well, good that's what him. bachelor party is for. Getting Gary. what out of his system? His last, his last freedom, his last, you know, <laughs> enjoyment of, of 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 another woman. Let the, let that man live. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. It's just silly. And then she said that the guy wasn't her husband. So that's what I'm trying to figure out: was it actually him or not? She said that wasn't her husband in the video, and he would never cheat. But that's what you get for meddling in other folks' business. Now, you done messed up. Now, you done messed up these people's uh, life un- uh, unnecessarily. They life not messed up. If that wasn't her husband, that means she's going to continue going on with her life. Exactly. Yeah, but the, but the lady who started a mess, you done, you just started some yeah. unnecessary mess. Well, it wasn't started. So she was just trying to protect some woman from going ahead and getting married. If you cheated right there that day, okay. But what if he was a good? What if he was a good man? What if he was a good man? He was gonna have his last night little fling and then go on and be a, a wonderful husband. But what and a if was a fifth? And we no, all be no, drunk no, 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 no. That's not how that works. Yeah, well, that don't mean that he's a bad guy because he had a little fun on his uh, bachelor know. party. I want somebody to let me know because if you acting up the day before I get married and publicly humiliated. Humiliating me? No. Well, right. you'll never have that problem. So. Well, I guess I won't then. Mm-hmm. So I'll be playing hard to get. <laughs> you ain't got to play hard to get. <laughs> Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the teeth. Mm-mm, it's Gary, baby. Oh. Gary has the teeth and the color of the day, Gary. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Friday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Everybody's talking about it. I'm excited about it, y'all. Hopefully this is going to be true. But it's being reported, y'all, that Portia Williams, the beautiful Portia Williams from Real Housewives of Atlanta, they're saying, honey, her marriages, honey, are heating up. Now, we all know that Portia has filed for divorce from her wonderful husband, Mr. Simon Guabardi, y'all, recently. And people said, you know, that's a sad situation, but Portia still may come out smelling like a rose because it's being reported, y'all, that um, somebody spoke with a person that's close to the reality star who's saying, y'all, that Portia may be considering reconciling with her baby's father, Mr. Dennis McKinney, an Atlanta businessman. Now, they say you recall that Portia and Dennis, y'all, brought y'all daughter Pilar into this world together. Now, the couple split a- 
amicably and have remained in each other's lives, both as friends and co-parents. Well, they're saying y'all that Portia and Dennis were spider hunting recently, y'all, together at daughter P. Law's beautiful soccer match. Now, they're saying, y'all, that um, Portia has been um, leaning on Dennis, y'all, during this tough time that she's going through. And they're saying that Portia, honey, friends think that the two are rekindling their old love. Now, the friends mm-hmm. said that Dennis has always been around and that they never had issues between D and to keep it real, they're saying he's probably the best relationship that she's ever had in her whole entire life, honey. So, isn't that beautiful? You know, when you go back, how they say it, when y'all say it's spinning the block, honey? You know, if she's spinning the block because, you know, Dennis is her, um, her daughter's father. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, people and They call not, that spinning the block. That They call it spinning the block because that's a new word. Yeah. Yes, I, I really think they just still good friends, Gary. Cause they is that what it is? Yeah, they oh. co-parent, and then people are just adding. Yeah, they that would make is. something. Up. Yeah, uh, but you know what? Too, it's like um, sometimes you can date a person, and it's a certain version of that person. And after time and experience, you change, they change, and it's a better match when you get back together. Yeah. So that could be the case now. Well, congratulations. I mean, Ricky, could you go back to her ex? Uh, after she had been with somebody, after she had been with somebody yeah, else. Yeah, I mean sometimes. Uh, yeah, I mean you know uh, people go through hell. I'd have been with somebody else probably and then, then double that since they. Act. But uh, yeah. sometimes you have to give them chance chance to grow. Uh, some in some cases grow up. In some cases mature. In yeah. some cases, you know, it just depends. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes people are different and more mature, have more experience, and then when yeah. they come back, uh, you know, to the relationship, they're ready. Yeah. Well, if that's so, congratulations to them, y'all. Moving on, honey, and other celebrity news, y'all. They're saying, baby, the trend of washed-up bodies just landing wealthy young athletes. It's continuing, honey. It's being reported, y'all. We know we talked about Miss Dre and Michelle. You know, they said she got pregnant for her NBA star, Mr. Jalen Green. Well, honey, now it's being reported that... Her best friend, good friend, Miss Joey Chavez, honey, just did the same thing, honey. They're saying Joey is a 35-year-old. Yeah, they say, baby, Miss Joey, 35, a music video dancer who has children by Bow Wow and Future, honey, announced yesterday that she is pregnant and expecting her third child amid her romance with her boyfriend, guess who, Ricky? Trayvon Ooh. Diggs, y'all. Y'all know Trayvon? Oh, yeah. Yes, baby. Yes, they said this girl got her Trayvon Diggs. Now, they say uh, Miss Chavez and the Dallas Cowboys saw our first spark dating rumors back in September 2022 when Mr. Diggs posted a video of the internet personality to his Instagram stories in honor of her birthday. Now, they're saying the she following month. Bad. She got two brothers yeah. and an NFL oh. player. Hey, he, bought, he bought a Rolls Royce Cullinan yeah. for her birthday. Yes, baby. He loved her. And the thing is, though, Ricky, I mean, he's only making 90 Seven million dollars. He just signed a ninety-seven million dollar contract extension, oh. honey, and they say it's worth up to one hundred and four million dollars in potential bonuses. So, I mean, you know, he got some um, extra change that he could help her Roll out with. Damn tight. Yeah, he's from <laughs> Alabama. Today, so he played in Alabama. <laughs> but now, it's also report y'all that he has three kids, honey, from a previous relationship, and Miss Chavez has her daughter Shy, which is twelve, from Bow Wow, and her son Hendrix, which is five. From future, y'all. So congratulations. It's good that love is still finding itself. And what I like about this, though, these younger guys are loving these older women, honey, because they deserve love, too. So, you know, go ahead and give them who you need to give with and love them and, and you know, and take care of them. And, and it's just a good look. Woo. So. And, and it's black boy, love. Boy, could That's imagine like. the dating pool back in, back in the 90s, boy. The dating pool was like that. Man, yeah. you had to go to the damn club to find somebody. Yeah. You had to have a pen and a little piece of paper. Right. Write their number Damn. down. Well, now you just got to put a picture on social media, honey. And the guys, and it's amazing. So these guys must be really yearning for these young ladies when they were younger. You know, used to pay our posters of them on, you know. They might be, they might be thinking that the older ladies are more mature. Or but they are. Probably but, the chicks their age probably are uh, just not ready. But yeah. they're older, but they're not old. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 35 is still pretty young. Yeah. Yep. And both of them have baggage. She has two. He got three. So they could have five. And, and that's a good look, so, you know. And I'm just glad that they're looking among within the house, honey. They're all looking at each other. They're all African-American descent. So give everybody an opportunity, honey, to have, share the wealth. So that's what I like about and it. And the love. And it's the not love. just the money, Gary. Well, it's well, money, love also. Yeah, but love can't pay too many bills right now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go to the electric company and say, oh, can I pay this $1,000 light bill? Love is going to pay it. 
So, uh, uh. But love sustains your happiness. Happiness, you know what that is? No. Okay. I'm <laughs> 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 Come on today, honey. Look like it. Like the Lord today, y'all, it's Northern Droplet. On the high end, you say Northern Droplet. On the low end, you say beautiful metallic silver. That's your color for the day, honey. <laughs> All right, y'all, give it up for Gary with the team. <laughs> All right, y'all, this is the show. Time right now is 22, 22 minutes after hour. Wake up, God. Here we go. Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's time to get yourself together. Because he woke you up this long. This land you in your house. You go and be better. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Encourage each other and be productive. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Want to know what you call it from? So come on and tell us. And just wake up. Calvin Mitchum from Cocoa, Florida. I want to say good morning. The Ricky Smiley Morning Show and all my people's back home. Well, yeah. Adrian Terry calling from Ocala, Florida. Want to wake up all the Terrys in Ocala, Florida. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Hey, this is Kirk from Kannapolis, North Carolina. Want to say wake up, wake up, wake up to my nephew Desi. Love you, boy. This is Mel Dorch. I'm calling from South Hill, Virginia. And I just want to say, you know, we all going through something, but today is Friday. Change is going to come, baby. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Yes. If you listening on your radio. Come on. Kansas City, wake up. In Columbus, wake up. Cincinnati, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. West Palm Beach, wake up. In Greenville, wake up. Come on, Jacksonville, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. I appreciate that, Brad Maria. What you got coming up next? things happening in your life, you may want to keep the good news to yourself. I'll tell you why inside Mind, Body, and Business. That's up next on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Mind, Body, Business with Maria Moore on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, so Ricky Smiley Morning Show, 28 after the hour time for Mind, Body, and Business. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everyone. So inside today's Mind, Body, and Business, I want to talk about the importance of keeping things to yourself. You know, when positive, amazing, wonderful things are happening in your life, it's natural to want to tell everybody, your friends, your family, your coworkers, all the folks who follow you on social media. But sometimes that can invite unwelcome energy. So I want to go down a few reasons why you should keep your success, your ideas, that big thing to yourself. Uh, the first one is pretty obvious. Your idea might be stolen. This actually mm. happened to me. Uh, you, yeah, I had an apparel line. Well, I still have an apparel line called Self Love is So Gangster. And I started selling them and I got it real aggressive and it was going really well. And all of a sudden, I see this girl on the West Coast selling the same exact shirts. No way. And charging double than what I was charging. And so, luckily for me, I had to hurry up and get uh, an attorney to trademark um, my brand. And then I sent the girl a cease and desist. But we hear so many stories about celebrities being sued uh, because of ideas. And we see it happen to folks a lot of times. You know, have y'all ever had a, uh, an idea or a version of an idea and all of a sudden you see somebody else do it? Even if you didn't tell them. You ever see somebody do something? You'd be like, dang, I thought of that. I wish I would have done that. Yep. Yeah. Man, people be sitting up doing stuff, doing the most. That's why you have to get your stuff. Uh, what's that thing with the lawyer? You have to get it. Um, Trademark. Trademark, and yeah. Pay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just just keep that in mind. Yeah, we, you know. we, we, be, we be quick to spike the ball before we get into the end zone. Wait till you get into oh, the end zone. Yes. You got all your stuff tight before you start telling people and, and, and stuff like that. And then just kind of be careful with it because unless you're advertising, of course, because uh, – Man, a lot of time, man, every, you better, you're going to realize, learn the hard way, everybody is not going to be happy for you. Yeah. So let your stuff kind of have some success before you start, unless it's something that you need to immediately advertise. You know I what had I a mean? great idea one time. I said, like, you could let people call you if they need a ride somewhere, and you just go pick mm. them up in your car. Mm. Next thing I know. Was that your original idea, really? <laughs> All right, next thing I have on my list, you may be dissuaded. Have you ever shared a good idea with someone, and they say, why are you doing that? You can't do that. Yes. That's too hard. You not? Yeah. Are you sure you can do that? You know, and then you invite all of this discouraging energy, and then you start second guessing yourself. Well, maybe I can't do it, especially if that energy comes from someone that you love and respect. I'm telling you. Man, listen. I'm t- Ricky, sometimes no, go ahead. people no, go ahead. Go ahead. sometimes Mm-mm. people will discourage you because they've never experienced success themselves. 
So they are applying their idea of success and failure on you because they've never done it before. So you have to be very careful about who you share your business with. I have my best friend, and let me tell you something. If I tell her I want to sell screwdrivers on the side of the highway, she'll be like, yes, Maria. Like, she is always encouraging me. And so you got to be real careful about who you tell because they may end up telling you not to do but it, that, and then, yeah. But, mm-hmm. but that fine line, uh, share your ideas with somebody successful so that sometimes what they will do, which is absolutely not discouraging, they'll keep you from making some of the mistakes and say, hey, yes, slow down a little part. bit right here. You know, just ask for guidance uh, from somebody who's already successful, who have no reason to be jealous of you. Yeah. So that's yeah. important as well. It's just kind of it like is. a fine line. Yeah, it's a fine line. So you really have to use, you know, apply that discernment. And then the last thing is the reason why you shouldn't share because you might change your mind. <laughs> and then you're looking real crazy. Folks be like, oh, well, what was that thing that you were talking about? And you're like, right. oh, I, yeah, I had I had changed my mind. I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. Um, but, you know, certain things are really important to protect. You know, a lot of times we even see celebrities. They don't talk about their pregnancy until they almost do because you just don't want to welcome any negativity or bad energy into your experience. So, uh, again, like you said, Ricky, you got to use discernment. Some people you can trust. Sometimes you just need to keep things to yourself and guard your idea, your success, and your joy. That's what I have for you inside Mind, Body, and Business. There it is. I appreciate that, Maria Moore. Uh, Let let everybody know how you can be reached. Hey, check me out on Instagram at Maria Moore, M-A-R-I-A-M-O-R-E. Thank you, Ricky. There it is. All right, Chicken and Waffle Mix coming up next. You don't want to miss it, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Yes, sir. All right, now, now watch. Now, y'all see how the energy was up. Energy's up, John. Energy's up. Energy's up. Energy's up. The energy is up. The energy, the energy, the energy is up. Watch this. Hello? What's up, Sean? See? Told you. what I say, John? I need see, to take I, a day. I, I, yeah, see? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bring the energy down. I need to take a day, though, Sean. I need to take a day. For what? I got a death in the family. Well, I, I, so, I mean, oh my I, God! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is right, right music day. Give me some. Give me um, uh, never would have made it by uh, cause I, I am so, <laughs> so sorry to hear that. Uh, give me uh, Yo, Marvin. I'm not, Marvin I'm, 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 I'm not gonna cry. No, no, I'll cry it out. Yeah, yeah. You need a day. Uh, no, nah, like I'm not. That. I'm not. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. I'm all cried out. But uh, it's it's really it's really a tragic a tragic hold situation. On, on, he but... fell off in the dishwater, <laughs> and he couldn't swim. <laughs> and my grandmama came here this morning to make some coffee. <laughs> Your grandma what? She came here this morning to make some coffee. And he was in the dishwater with them dishes that didn't get washed last night. <laughs> that is so sad. What kind of dish? What kind of dish detergent she had in there? Palm olive, so his skin was real soft. But he was dead. Mm-hmm. <coughs> <coughs> I'm gonna try to beat it on Monday. Tell him, to, tell him to let the water out, but leave the strainer in there. <laughs> I'm for real. You borrow money from a white person, don't never give it back. This was it. This is the last thirty dollars. <laughs> you borrow some money from a black person, they're gonna threaten you before they give it to you. Let me tell you about my money plan. <laughs> <laughs> I worked too hard for my <laughs> sh- You know what I mean? And I started not to give it to you. <laughs> you be like, you know what? <laughs> you and that twenty dollars, all right? <laughs> To the T. It's Gary, baby. Gary has the T and the color of the day. Gary, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Friday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Comedian actress Tiffany Haddish, y'all, is being reported, y'all, and it's rumored, y'all, that Tiffany 
has given up alcohol because they're saying she is reportedly y'all trying to get pregnant. Now, they're saying that Tiffany attended the Elton John's annual AIDS Foundation Oscar party on Sunday where she avoided any alcohol. Now, they're saying eventually an attendee asked her why she was not drinking, and she responded, baby, I'm trying, honey, to get pregnant. That's what Tiffany said, child. That's what they're saying she said. But another source said that the comedian told others that she did not feel like it, but there could be another reason for her declining alcohol. Now, y'all remember, honey, the girl's trip actor was found asleep, honey, at the wheel in a parked car, honey, in Beverly Hills, California the other day, honey. They said she was charged with two misdemeanor counts driving under the influence and driving with a blood alcohol level of at least 0.08%. Now, they're saying the DUI was her second one that year, honey, and she is serious about her sobriety. So, you know, maybe she's trying to get pregnant, Ricky, or maybe, honey, she can't drink, honey, because this girl, she don't want to go to the pen, honey. So, you know, could y'all imagine Tiffany Haddish being a mother, though, and, and, and what sad part about Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah, she could be yeah, a mother. Yeah, but being, I, being a mom is a game changer. Once, you, you know, you have a baby, it's just certain things you're not going to do anymore. Yeah. You know, you're going to kind of chill out and be focused on your child because it's not about you anymore. That's I think that's with everybody, most responsible parents. I think she would be a great mom and a great, responsible, uh, loving, kind mother. Yeah, but the sad part about the what I feel so bad about, if she were to get pregnant, I mean, who would it be for? Because, you know, um, Carmen dumped her for um, Jennifer Hudson, so she, she really loved him. And, you know, he probably wouldn't be the daddy. So who would be the daddy? I'm sure she'll find somebody. I mean, she's a hot catch. You get a chance to get with Tiffany Haddish. You know, she ain't no, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? She's been doing things and got a great career, got a great personality, sweet, funny, kind, loving. I know her personally. So I think uh, that's a catch. That's a great catch for somebody. Well, congratulations. And hopefully Tiffany get the love she needs, honey. And, and if she decides she wants to have a baby, do the same thing and, and be happy. All right, moving on. And other celebrity news, y'all, speaking of being happy, honey, Lil Mama Baby, honey, they say that girl became the laughing stock after she crashed at Jay-Z and Alicia Keys' 2009 performance at the um, MT Video Award musical. And I remember that vividly, honey. They said, but when Lil Mama hit the stage, both Jay-Z and Alicia Keys, baby, they ignored her, baby. They served her dust. And they said, to this day, people still bringing up that performance is what happened with Lil Mama. Well, y'all, she was asked about the performance during the interview, y'all, recently. And she said, Courtney, this is sad. She said, I had to deal with Ed Lover on the radio in the morning, Wendy Williams, Angie Martinez, who talked to Jay, and he was just like, yeah, you know, honey, I didn't like that. He was so angry, and I was just trying my best, y'all, to do everything I could do. She said, little mama said that she had to learn, y'all, to forgive herself. You know, Rick, and that's the sad part about it. She cried about it. She said, after a while, I was like... Forgive yourself, bro. Move forward. She said, bro, I was hurt. I was depressed. I was like, yo, what's going on? And then, honey, you got everybody telling you you're doing bad, honey. People pointing at you like, what did you do, honey? And and, and she cried about that in that interview. You know, people never forget what they, I mean, I just thought she was just trying to be nice and go on stage with Alicia Keys and um, Jay-Z at the time and stuff. But people attacked her and people still, you know, bringing that up to her. Right now, today, and something, she had to learn how to forgive herself. That's and a moment in hip hop history. That's because she wasn't part of the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she wasn't part of that performance, Gary. I and know, it surprised man. them too when she came on stage. So you can't just go up on stage on somebody's set, whether she was trying to be nice or not. They didn't need her performance, and she wasn't a part of it. She wasn't a part of what they rehearsed, nor was she part of the song or the video. Yeah, but I mean, but could you tell her excitement? And then what really bothered me the most, because they just replayed it the other day, when she was running up to the stage, Beyonce grabbed her arm, like trying Ooh. to jerk her back. She was trying to help her out, like, now, don't she do this to yourself. She didn't try to jerk her, but don't do that, Gary. Beyonce you know. was trying to stop her before she went up there. And did you see little mama's face like, get your arm off me? Yeah, like, I it was It was her. a little funky. Yeah, but that Why was you don't mom. blame her? She was trying to help her from going up there. But that was her moment in time. Her moment to make a fool of herself and, no, and be no, tor- no. tormented by it for the day. How many times years? somebody was singing a solo at church and then the pastor took over and finished the song? <laughs> That's the pastor. <laughs> he the head of the church. Yes, Lord. But uh, yeah, let, but let's just keep um, little mama, you know, lifted, honey, because she just she didn't mean wrong, honey. She just wanted, you know, she was excited. She that loved was the so song, long honey. ago, and she just want, <laughs> yeah, she just want people to forget about that, you know. Let's, she just want to move on with her life. So we should let her, but some people won't. But she yeah. should also stop talking about like it. You, she Gary. should stop taking interview questions about it. And that, you know, because a lot of they people ask have her bad anyway, things. Maria. Yeah, they ask her anyway, but you know, she don't have to like go into detail about it. 
Yeah. You well, know? maybe somebody should right. build a statue. I mean, just ride it. Take it and ride it. Build a statue. <laughs> put it out. Put it up somewhere in the uh, in, in T.I. <laughs> in T.I. Museum with her with little mama standing on stage and like half of uh, a, a Jay-Z and Alicia Key, but you got little mama out front. Mm. It is a moment in hip-hop history, an unforgettable moment. It wasn't a terrible moment. No. But it was it a wasn't. moment. <laughs> yes, yeah, so and let's just do that. But anyway, let's keep little mama lifted up because she was depressed. And I know about depression, honey. So I know how she felt when people did it like a dog, honey. So we're going to keep them in her in breath. Did her like a dog. All right, the Kalua. The Kalua today, honey, is one of my favorite Kalua. My Kalua today, y'all, is Northern Droplet. On the high end, you say Northern Droplet. And on the low end, you say, Northern Droplet, and on the lawn, you say beautiful metallic silver. That's your Kalua for today. Oh, that's nice right there. Y'all give it up for Gary. Gary, that's beautiful. Y'all give it up for Gary with the T. (laughs) (laughs) Did you see that post? People are talking. Here's what's trending on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. This Sunday is St. Patrick's Day in many cities around the country. We'll celebrate. With parades, parties by down there, Rivers Green, like in uh, in Chicago and in Savannah. Now, according to the National Retail Federation, Americans are planning to spend a record seven point two billion, or forty four point forty per person, forty four dollars, uh, uh, forty four dollars per person on the holiday this year. Now, most of that will be on food and beverages, probably more beverages than food. Now, in um. A record 162 million Americans are planning to celebrate, maybe by either wearing green, making a special dinner, going to a party or bar, decorating their home, or hosting a party. Yeah, Ricky. Other traditions, well, you know, you have to throw something green with it on it um, so you don't get pinched. I hate that. (laughs) I'm not wearing green and somebody trying to pinch me. Most schools are honoring the holiday today, so make sure you send the kids in with something green if you haven't done so already. People also think that sporting the color will bring them luck along with the four-leaf clover, which is considered a symbol of good luck worldwide. So uh, for today's Fill in the Blank Friday, we want to know the luckiest thing that ever happened to me was blank. Uh, hit us up at 866-9-RICKY, 866-9-R-I-C-K-E-Y. Uh, the luckiest thing, Brett, what, 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 give me something. I know you got something. Uh, when the real BB Judy said she was interested in me. <gasps> Beautiful. Aww. That's so sweet. Oh, my. Beautiful. Yep. Come Beautiful. on, tell us story. Take us there, make us cry right now. Well, it was one night she was in Atlanta on a tour, her last tour, and I decided to go check her out because I had did some promo for the Miracle Drops and I had never met her. And I just wanted to meet her. So it was so many people in the place. I said, just come on down to the studio when you finish and let's link. Well, she thought I meant let's link, link, and she came by herself. So we was talking at the studio and stuff, and we was talking about edges and Miracle Drops and hair. And then she just hit me with the, I'm interested. And I'm like, er, interested in what? Because I ain't know nothing. I, I didn't think she, you know, I ain't know nothing about right. her like that, like that. And so, you know, the rest is history. We are married now with a beautiful baby boy. Oh. That's some tea right there, ain't it, Gary? Oh, that is. Oh, my God. I mean, I need a <laughs> tissue. Um. Now, now, Gary, what's the luckiest <laughs> thing ever happened to you? Well, you know what, Rick, and, and uh, this is, I'm very serious about this, too. I'll never forget, I was at home one day, um, it was a summer day, and I was at home one day, and a lady named Jada Burton called me at home, and she said, Gary, um, um, Ricky Smiley's in the country, and um, he's needing somebody to go look for him some furniture. Would you like to go look for him some furniture? And I'm like, yeah, that. hell, I ain't doing nothing. So, honey, I um, re- connected with Ricky. I went mad at him, honey. I went look for some furniture for him for his apartment because he was just moving to Dallas. And I went look for some furniture oh, and, you know, found the furniture and what have you. know, he approved it and da 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 And I'm like, well, hell, I ain't going to be running for you looking for you no know, furniture. You need an assistant? And he said, well, call my sister because at the time your sister um, was handling your affairs. And so, so I called her and, you know, we talked it out and stuff. And one thing led to another. And... I became Ricky's assistant, and I got back on the radio because I was at home, honey. I could have yeah, been at home, baby, picking cotton. But and went and yeah. bought that bought that terrible ass furniture, and then, and then <laughs> didn't, didn't do half of the stuff right. <laughs> and then you did all that and used that opportunity just to get back on the radio when you didn't tell nobody you had got fired from the other radio station for stealing. Look, that's, that's what you should have should have told during the interview. But I digress. Uh, uh, Maria, what about you? <laughs> 
Um, I would say not the luckiest, but lucky. My house, the first house I bought in 2008, it was during the recession. It was a brand new house, 3,000 square feet, brand new. Uh, I got it for $220,000. Oh, at a super low interest rate. It was like two point something percent. So I was able to pay that house off. And now I have a free and clear rental property with tenants who pay on time. Uh, no Ooh, section there. Nothing. Lucky. You have to no get on section there. Oh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 uh, Special K, what, what about you? You know, I had to think about Let's it. Let's go right? to the call. 866 866 I'm not going to do you like that. Go ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> Brett made me think about I met my uh my beautiful wife, your girlfriend. Uh <laughs> the, the wonderful on the first yeah. lady. Yeah, and she's a, she's a St. Patrick's Day baby. Her her birthday is on St. Patrick's really? Day. Yeah, her birthday nice. is Sunday. And I met her thirty years ago. And uh yeah, that's the, probably the luckiest thing oh, that happened so to me. And when I tell you I love me some Shari, man, <laughs> I swear that's the best sister in law ever. Ever. Yeah, Absolutely they can hang out for hours. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, let's go to the phones. 866-9-RICKY, 866-9-R-I-C-K-E-Y. Good morning. I'm Lisa from Eagle Lake, and the luckiest thing that ever happened to me was meeting my husband, Benjamin, back in 2006. Changed my whole freaking life. My name is Deborah, and I am calling from Lancaster. And probably the luckiest thing that ever happened to me was winning money on a scratch-off, a large sum. The luckiest thing that ever happened to me is when I was in college, I didn't have enough money to live on campus, and the lady who didn't even know me um, invited me to stay at her house, and it turns out that she was Sydney 48's. Okay, my name is Will. I'm calling from Indianapolis, and the luckiest thing that ever happened to me was when I met my wife in the drug rehab. The luckiest thing that happened to me after I lost my job I had for 15 years due to the COVID stuff, I went to the casino and I hit for $11,000-something. dollars. Ismail from Plantation, Florida. Luckiest thing that ever happened to me was being promoted to a management position, um, making $11,000 more on top of my salary without any management experience. This is Sean calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, the luckiest thing that ever happened to me was to find out that my ex was plotting on me. Hi, um, I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. The luckiest thing that ever happened to me was getting pulled over by the police, no license, no insurance, weed in the car, and the police let me go, baby. Hey, the luckiest thing that ever happened to me is I won a wedding from the Dallas Mavericks. The luckiest thing that happened to me when I bought a $5 scratch-off, didn't scratch it off right then and there, ended up having a drug bust at my mom's house, got my boyfriend. They didn't take the ticket, so when I scratched off the ticket after the drug bust, it was $1,000. So I was very lucky. Oh, wow. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a blessing, man. Congratulations to all of y'all. Uh, this thing I'm having to me, man, was just having the best grandparents of all time. And, and, I, and I swear, everything, every single thing, every single aspect of my life, everything that I do, everything that I know how to do from getting up on time, the discipline, the structure, the correction, the cooking, the food, the, the working, like working in the yard all day uh, yesterday in uh <laughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, I need to take an Allegra. Uh, you know, just all of the blessings that has has uh, passed down. What the hell is that? An ambulance? Do I, oh, I don't know. It sounds like, like somebody coming to pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you talking about luck? <laughs> all right, y'all, we got it. <laughs> that was random. <laughs> A random damn ambulance. We got back. Freaking smile in the morning show. All right, Jarvis, Mountain Morning Show. It is about that time for Battle of the Sexes. I'm so excited about this, man. For them Dollar Tree prizes, we got Demetria that's coming from 1039 The Groove. Yeah. Who is there, Kentucky? Yeah. Good morning. What up? Good morning. Good morning. How you feeling? I'm well. How are you? We glad to have you this morning. And we got Malik from V101.7, Bonaire, Georgia. <laughs> Hey, what up, Malik? What's going on? I'm about to go shopping at Dollar Tree because we're taking this down for the fellas. Yes, sir. Hey, you got you got to do it, bro. We happy to have both of y'all this morning. So listen. So if you feel like you don't know the answer, just say pass, and you will save yourself a lot of time. All right. All right. Okay. All right, Miss Demetria. Let's go first. All right. Let's start the clock. Okay. 
How many NBA championship rings does Michael Jordan have? Eight. Nope, six. Ugh. All right, what is the capital of Tennessee? Nashville. Yes. Ball, peen, claw, and mallet describes three types of what tool? Hammer. Yes. What boxer did Will Smith portray in a movie, in the movie Ali? I'm sorry. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. Don't keep it down. Oh, <laughs> All right. What college did NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal attend? What college did he go to? LSU. Yes. A hydraulic floor jack is normally used to lift what? A car. Yep. Wow. Three Stripes logo is from what athletic company? Uh, Nike. <laughs> no, Adidas. <laughs> All right. Red, oh, oh, I mean, she got four, right? That's good. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, Brett, let's go. Congratulations. Let's go. Start the clock. Acetone is used to remove what cosmetic product? Ooh, um, thinking that polish. That's right. What does the television network BET stand for? Black and Intended Network. I mean, Black and Intended T- Television. Yep. Which WNBA player was the first to win Rookie of the Year and MVP in the same season? Pass. That's Candace Parker. What do you call a purse that goes across your chest? Uh, is it a clutch? A crossbody. Well, yeah, I don't know. What do you call a heel with a typical rubber material that serves as both a sole and the heel? Wedge. Wedge steel? That's right. What is the largest organ of the human body? The lungs. Who? Lungs. Largest organ of the human Skin. body? Lungs. Ooh. Skin. So how many total pills are standard in a prescription of monthly birth control? Uh, ooh, I don't take them. <laughs> mm. uh, 31. <laughs> that would be 30. 30, uh, almost. Oh, man, that was close, man. How many did he get? Three. All right, she won. Special, uh, yeah. <laughs> Special K, where did she win? All right, it's an exciting Friday. Congratulations. You're a winner, ma'am, today of the fabulous, amazing... <laughs> Enticing prize back from America's store, <laughs> the Dollar Tree. <laughs> hey, we're going to start it off on a high note. I hope you're in a snacking mood. How about that Pompa brand? Smoked oysters in a can with carrots, onions, <laughs> and red chili peppers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. From Jot, a 40-pack of multicolored pencil erasers. Oh, yeah. How about that magical poop candy flavored marshmallows? Yum yum. You got a brown coffee cup. Oh yeah. How about from Swabatel? 20 count dryer sheets. Fresh air flavor. Excuse me, scent. Now you got from Lay It Down a sleek light blue long tail do rag. Okay. From Harvest Snaps, green pea snaps, lightly salted, gluten free. Delicious plant protein based. Okay, that's healthy. <laughs> and you got a sidewalk chalk with a holder. Four colors for hours of creativity and fun. You got a 10 inch foil balloon. It's blue. All right. <laughs> and finally, you got that old Wisconsin smokestack beef sausage and jalapeno cheese, meat sticks, mega snack size, long. <laughs> Thick and meaty. Oh, yeah. mm. That's all yours from the Dollar Tree and the Ricky's Morning Morning Show. And sir, sir, you didn't win, but you got a consolation prize. You got a $20 gift card to the Men's Chest Wax Spa. That's right. You got nappy chest hair. Give your lady a treat. In only 10 minutes, they can wax that burnt taco meat. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Hey, congratulations, y'all. Thank y'all for playing Battle of the Sexes. More of the morning show coming up. Uh, coming out of Atlanta, Georgia, judge ruled, uh, a judge ruled that Bonnie Willis uh, will not be disqualified from prosecuting the racketeering case against Donald Trump and several of his co-defendants, but because 
of the appearance of impropriety, she or the special prosecutor has had a relationship which must uh, uh, step down from the case. So on the phone, we got the president of the Georgia uh, uh, NAACP, Attorney Gerald Griggs. Hey, Gerald, good morning. Hey, man, we, we, we good, man. Happy to have you this morning. Uh, breaking news probably about five minutes ago. Uh, let everybody know what's going on and your thoughts. Okay, my thoughts are that Judge McAfee made a correct ruling under the law in Georgia. The Williams case was very clear that there had to be an actual conflict to remove the district attorney. So uh, Judge Scott McAfee said that it was not legally sufficient evidence presented uh, to remove the district attorney in the Trump interference case. But he also added the caveat that the appearance of impropriety uh, would cause either the Fulton County District Attorney's Office to have to recuse themselves or Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade to recuse themselves. So I believe it's a correct interpretation of the law with regard to the Williams case in Georgia, and I think that we will continue to see uh, vigorous prosecution of Donald Trump by the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. Hey, hey, hey Joe, I, got, I, I have to ask you, um, do it seem, uh, being the president of the NAACP, did it feel like they was trying to undermine uh, the process and just come up with something just because that the, that the uh, District Attorney's Office was prosecuting Donald Trump, how much of this was political? I think it was all political. Um, None of the allegations met the legal standard, and I I do believe that the motion should never have been brought. Uh, So I think it was an attempt to smear the district attorney's office. I think it was an attempt to subvert uh, the will of the grand jurors to proceed with this case. I think it was a motion um, that was more about salacious information and a media s- uh, smear than it was about the law in Georgia. So as the president of the Georgia State Conference, we were concerned uh, that we won't get to the bottom of what actually happened in the election, which is what this case is about. But now that the judge has ruled, uh, I think the DA's office will make a decision and probably move forward without the special prosecutor and continue to uh, prosecute this case and get to the bottom of what actually happened in Fulton County. So uh, also, uh, Georgia uh, primary is about to start in May 21st, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. We just had our presidential primary on Tuesday, and then the regular primary will be in May. Right. Uh, so mm, so how can, uh, are you concerned about anything as far as this case? How concerned are you? I'm not concerned at all. I knew this motion was not going to be successful from the very beginning. You know, having practiced law in Georgia for 20 years, I've seen defense motions come and go. This one was a novel one, uh, but the law was clear. So my concern is whether or not there was an attempt to subvert the will of uh, voters in Georgia, particularly African-American voters who turned out in large numbers. So now we'll get to the bottom of what happened in this case. The defendants will get their due process. The citizens of Fulton County will make a decision. And if the evidence is proven, Somebody's going to be spending a substantial amount of time in a Georgia Corrections Institute. Gerald, mm-hmm. don't you, Gerald, don't, real quick, don't you also think that these motions and the motions of all his attorneys in every court case that he's in, it's all just stall tactics to try and buy more time to push every date closer to the election, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's an attempt to delay, but what people need to understand is this is a state-level case. So even if Mr. Trump is elected president, he cannot pardon himself from this particular case because it's a state level case but it is an attempt to delay uh, i think there might be an appeal of this ruling by the defense i still don't see how it would be uh successful because the law is quite clear on this uh but you know it's an attempt to delay and the people want to get to a resolution of this you know before the election to make a you know an intelligent decision on whether or not uh this individual should in fact be running for office considering the 91 charges around four cases that he's facing. Yeah. 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 Attorney uh, Griggs. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, you know, just as a woman, I just admire Fani uh, so much. You know, we saw her look, you know, visibly annoyed by all of the questioning. How do you think this case and the outcome is going to impact, impact the level of aggression she has with the case against Trump? <laughs> I've known <laughs> Fani for a long time. I've never seen her disfocused. I think the defendant should be very concerned. She's going to do whatever she needs to do within the bounds of the law, but she's now focused on this case and the outcome of this case. So I think 
they stoked and poked the bear. Mm. Right. The, the, the man uh, uh, that's being taken off the case, to, uh, one of the prosecutors, was he not one of the, the like the brains behind this entire prosecution? Would that be a big loss? He was. It will be a big loss. You know, uh, Special Prosecutor Wade is an exceptional lawyer here in Georgia. He's been practicing over 30 years, uh, former uh, defense attorney and a, a sitting uh, judge at one point. Uh, so he's he's going to be missed. But I think that, the you know, the people of the state of Georgia want to get to a resolution. And I think the judge uh, made the right decision with regard to the legal interpretation and to avoid the appearance of impropriety. Uh, gave them an opportunity to make a decision with regard to who will continue. Uh, so he'll be missed, uh, but I think that we, that the, the prosecution will continue and we'll get to a resolution of what happened in 2020 in Georgia. And I got a, dub, a, a two-part question. Uh, do you think that was a great idea, one of the uh, the best things happening in this situation, for uh, Fonnie Willis herself to take the stand and... Uh, what happens to Donald Trump and in, and in, in with this case? And do you think uh, he's going to do some jail time behind these offenses if he get proven guilty? Like actually? Well, I think that she was very strong in her defense of, uh, against these allegations when she took the stand. I know her father was also very strong in his uh, testimony. Uh, I think that, you know, if they're able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that what's alleged actually happened, yes, Donald Trump would spend a substantial amount of time in prison in Georgia. What people need to understand is, you know, the rules apply to everybody in Georgia. I can't speak for the rest of the states or in the federal court, but in Georgia, if you are unsuccessful at a trial, there's a strong likelihood that you will be spending time in Jackson, Georgia. And given the allegations and the amount of time it took to investigate this and the special purpose grand jury and then the actual grand jury indicting uh, the number of charges they have, there should be grave concerns by the defendants uh, as to their exposure for criminal liability. Special case of Donald Trump go to that prison right there. All them times we used to go to that damn prison to see a family member. We, you have to pass by the Atlanta Zoo. We never stop by the zoo. And that, that is, uh, I've, I, talked uh, to my therapist about that attorney degree. Never, ever, not one time stopped by that zoo because you had to go past the Atlanta Zoo to, to get to the uh, federal prison. Never. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have to understand, he will be going to a state prison, and they are far worse than the Atlanta penitentiary oh, yeah. that you're talking about. So uh, the, the main prison is in Jackson, which is right in Butts County, right below Henry County. So it's it's even worse. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, get off my butt. I said, what case? There ain't no joke down there. <laughs> you went to, another one you went to? Ooh, no, oh, no, 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 no. I never did nothing. No. Which I one you went to? Nothing like that. No, that. That's not important right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a different time in my life. And uh, Attorney Griggs has, has you know, we, 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 we moved past all of that. <laughs> Attorney before Griggs, we man. Past that, we, we moved on. Yes. How can, hey, real quick before you leave, how can people reach you and how can uh, anybody join, uh, 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 support the NAACP? Okay, you reach me on all social platforms at Attorney Griggs, A T T O R N E Y G R I G G S, or at the Georgia State Conference on all platforms, Georgia underscore NAACP. And they can join by going to the website, www.georgianaacp.org, or going to the national website, which is NAACP.org backslash join. All right, y'all. Attorney Gerald Griggs, more of the Money Show coming up. Show. 27 minutes after the hour, got your front page. We got breaking news this morning. Maria, what do you have? Oh, yes. We just had Attorney Griggs to talk about it. The judge overseeing the Georgia election interference case against former President Donald Trump and his co defendants has declined to outright disqualify. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. Now, he did rule that either she or Prosecutor Nathan Wade must step aside from the case. But, you know, we were talking about this sister and, and how she looked really annoyed during that question. And, and I'm not sure if Donald Trump wants this version of Fonnie Willis. Oh, yeah, because we've all, as black men, we've all dealt with upset or peed old, peed old black women. And that's one, you don't want to be on the other end of that. I'm just going to yeah. put it that way. She's well, going to be focused. I, that phone yeah, don't do yeah, not disturb. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, she's definitely going to be focused. Uh, every T will be crossed. Every I will be dotted. Absolutely. I think you're about to see her uh, go in and 
uh, 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 she was already professional, in my opinion. Absolutely. And she's not going to play no games because they tried to humiliate her uh, and put her personal business out there. And now she has another shot, uh, you know, you know, to finish the job. So okay. I think she will. Yeah. Like you said, very professional. She's going to be very focused. And I believe this is going to be at the top of her priority list. I think her attitude is if I don't ever prosecute or get a guilty verdict against another another defendant, I'm going to get this one against this one. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely yeah. keep you updated at Ricky Smiley at MorningShow.com. Um, in other news, a 27-year-old Florida woman has been found dead on a cruise ship in the Bahamas. Authorities said a team of medical personnel from the ship assisted and performed CPR, but no vital signs of life were detected, and she was declared deceased. Now, the cause of death is currently unknown, and the investigation is ongoing, but police did confirm that they confiscated a quantity of suspected cocaine from the cabin and arrested a 32-year-old American male from Florida. Lastly, we talked about this in the show today. Um, It is... St. Patrick's Day weekend. Who's going to get lucky and win all of this money? Mega Millions jackpot prize has grown to $792 million ahead of Friday. Oh, Tonight's drawing, it is the sixth uh, high total ever. Hey, Special K, if we win, we're going to go on, on tour and do football stadiums and all the tickets be free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Wow. They'll be That'll packed be, out. It'll be me, you, and DeBrett. They'll be packed out. <laughs> me, you, and, and DeBrett. Brent. And John Le- <laughs> With John Lyon oh, DJ, yeah, with John Lyon DJ, set that thing up. Boy. We'll go, we, mm-hmm. hey boy, we'll have private jet, we'll have all kind of buses, what? like li- live our dream. Come on now. Yeah. You know, it's seven hundred million. You can you can become your own star. Yeah. Listen, listen. I'm gonna be in the front teaching a fitness class because y'all Come gotta pull me in on it too. We're gonna do all that. Man. Yeah, and then Maria, you can go out first and have everybody doing yoga before we come out on yes. stage. Yes, we're just gonna have a hodgepodge of things happening. <laughs> just yeah, you comedy, hip hop, hodgepodge. <laughs> okay, Gary, you be in charge of the programs. Show. Yeah, yeah you'll be in charge of passing out programs. <laughs> and I'll pull all the tea early before y'all come out. Let them know all about y'all if y'all ain't giving right. me no money. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah, we, yeah, we're not giving you nothing now. You're right about that. Yeah, we'll pay you a little. Mm-hmm. We'll give you a little something for helping pass out the programs. Yes, yeah, honey. Get, get some nice programs. You know, you know at the funerals, they have the... Uh, the black and white obituaries, and, and then the family get the color. Everybody get the color gonna get a nice essence magazine type uh, program for the show. Not a whole oh. book. A whole yeah, book man. with all a our coffee resume. table book. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot and this hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the Biara 18. 29 before the top of the hour. Time for the hot spot. What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tad Tad, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Well, y'all, Regina King appeared on Good Morning America yesterday to give her first interview since the death of her son, Ian Alexander Jr., in January of 2022. Uh, Speaking with Robin Roberts, she admits that she is a different person now following his death two years ago. Her son, Ian, was a musician and DJ and died by suicide in January of 2022 at the age of 26. He was King's only child, and here's what she had to say. To have to experience this and not be able to have the time to just sit with Ian's choice, which I respect and understand that he didn't want to be here anymore. My favorite thing about myself is being Ian's mom. Yeah, that's, that's, that's deep. Um, she, man, the, 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 the yeah, she watch that, that, that interview, it, it made me really emotional. Uh, uh, yeah, me too. You know, everybody's version of losing a kid is totally different. Uh, but yeah. but I, I don't I don't I don't see how she did that. I don't see how she took that. I don't see how she's still here behind that because it was only the two of them. Yeah, yeah. It was it was really touching. She you know she had she had some tears roll down her face and stuff. I think everybody that was watching was crying a little bit like. Cause we love Regina King, you know she she's so right. sweet, and we follow her our whole lives since two two seven. Um, she also explained that grief is a journey. You know, she said, "I understand that grief is love that has no place to go. I know that it's important to me to honor Ian in the totality of who he is. Speak about him in the present because he is always with me in the joy and happiness that he gave all of us." So that was 
Yeah, she was Amazing. saying at the end, uh, uh, it's certain triggers. Uh, a lot of triggers make her laugh, and uh, and, and some triggers yeah. make her cry. And I, I understand all of yeah. it because it, it is definitely up and down. The grief comes in waves. Uh, you have your good days, your bad days, your painful days, your days where you just sit in the house all, all by yourself and you just have time to think, your days where you just sleep, uh, all of it. And, and, I'm, yeah. I'm, and I'm talking about this as a man. I just could not imagine uh, uh, being a woman and going through that kind of stuff. Uh, 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 that 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 one year trigger uh, was was so damn bad. New Year's Eve and uh, uh, seeing yeah. everybody that died in 2023 that started showing all that, and my anxiety was so bad. I thought my son was going to die all over again, and I was mm-hmm. walking through the house like panicking, like what can I do? Can I? How how can I change the outcome? Like, uh, it, it really messed with your mind to have you in a bad space, but but that's why you have to lean on God so hard with your feet off the ground. I'm talking about all the way up and yes. just let your body go limp and let God carry you, and he will. And we have to trust in, and trust yes. in him, and uh, he will give you peace that surpasses all understanding because we serve a, a, a very great, wonderful God. And if it was not for God, I Absolutely. wouldn't be here myself. And just imagine women like uh, Regina King and moms that's not celebrities that have to live with this uh, right. uh, uh, pain every day. Not a club you want to be in because it's, it's, I done lost grandparents. I lost a parent. And I done did all of that, cousins, uncles, or whatever. But when you lose a child, that's something that, that's something that, that you don't want that in your life. You don't want that. So uh, thank you, Brad, for sharing that. I want you all to keep Regina King lifted in prayer and every yes. single parent mm-hmm. That's out there that have to have to go through this, that have suffered the loss of a child. So appreciate that, Brad. Uh, y'all, more Ricky Smiley Morning Show coming up. Ricky Smiley Morning Show. The thing no one tells you about periods is that your flow changes every day, and so should your tampon size. Tampax has five absorbencies to match your changing flow. If it hurts to remove, go down a size. If it leaks, go up a size. Only Tampax has a leak guard braid to help give you up to 100% leak and odor-free protection. All-day comfort and protection for under $5 a month. Based on average U.S. consumer usage at manufacturer's suggested price, however, pricing is at the sole discretion of the retailer. Excludes a count pack. If you love to travel, Capital One has a rewards credit card that's perfect for you. With Venture X, earn unlimited double miles on everything you buy and turn everyday purchases into extraordinary trips. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges where you just check in and chill out. Open up a world of possibilities with Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Lounge access is subject to change. See CapitalOne.com for details. Hey, it's the Ricky Smiley Boy, the show, man. Rock T is in the house, and man, this is the big deal. This is the big deal. We're about to shut the airwaves down right about now. If you've ever researched financial or business advice, these two gentlemen have probably popped up on your timelines, man. They some of the most influential and motivational voices in this space and have made an impact all over the world. Please welcome to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, Rashad Bilal and Troy Millings of Earn Your Leisure, founders of Invest Fest. Welcome to the show, my brothers. Thanks for having us. All right, let's get it popping, man. Can y'all briefly walk us through how you guys got started and how you became one of the biggest media and business platforms out there? Yeah, we started um, teaching in the classroom. We was teaching financial literacy five years ago, transitioned into social media and started putting content on, online and started a platform called Earn Your Leisure. Every year, it just got bigger and bigger. Now we have a podcast network where we have five shows with the umbrella three in the top 100 on the charts. We do events, as you said, globally. We have a very big event called Invest Fest. Last year we had 20,000 people. Really, Earn Your Leisure is a, as you described it, it's a platform that's dedicated to educate people on entrepreneurship and investing. You know, we wanted to make sure that freedom is always the goal, uh, financial freedom specifically, uh, but it, there's steps to it. And so everything that you do, every step in life will lead you to the next one. And so earning your leisure or earning your freedom was, was ultimately the goal of why people were working. And we're like, well, how do we do that? Let's, let's figure out how we can create those steps. And so highlighting people from different walks of life was one of those key proponents to it, right? We know media and we know uh, sports and entertainment, but what about business? What about entrepreneurship? What about investors? This became the way that we, you know, we kind of found the purpose of 
having people earn their actual leisure or earn their freedoms. Y'all got everybody listening to you guys. You got everybody learning from you. I mean, the, the wealthiest man in America, Robert Smith, endorses you guys. I mean, everybody is saying, listen to Troy and Rashad. They know what they're talking about. This is stuff. Financial education was never taught in our community. And my dad has always taught me how to make money, but I, I was never taught what to do with the money after I made it. Words like passive income, cash flow, or, or multiple streams of income. That was not discussed on the block, man. So what tips can you give someone who wants to learn what to do with their savings or their mattress money? Can you share some financial principles out there to start practicing regardless of their income level? I think the number one thing that people need to understand is that you cannot save your way to wealth, right? We know that savings accounts and checking accounts really earn no money over the course of time. So the idea of just working and saving money is not going to propel you to a lifestyle where you can actually at one day retire or live off of your investments. So you have to start investing. You have to start investing early. They think you have to have a million dollars to start investing, but we always say it's a thing called dollar cost averaging. That's when you put small amounts of money into an investment over the course of time. Instead of putting $10,000 in at one time, you might put $100 a month, just like a 401k, right? To take a little bit out of your paycheck every single time you get paid. Over the course of time, now you might have a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in twenty, thirty years. So this is a get rich slow situation. It's not a get rich quick scheme, right? So people have to understand that building wealth takes time. All right, I guess I can go ahead and let the cat out the bag. There's a big deal coming up. Stomp Wars Weekend 2024. April the 12th and 13th, the nation's largest step championships right there in Dallas, Fort Worth. Shout out to the Divine Nine, all the HBCU alumni chapters, mama, daddy, third cousins, everybody. This has been become a huge all-age community event every single year. Earn Your Leisure will be kicking off Stomp Wars weekend April the 12th with an exclusive Step Up Your Financial Future event. Y'all got Dallas-Fort Worth and the whole area excited right now because don't nobody believe that y'all actually coming. So take a moment. <laughs> To explain why this event is so important for the DFW and surrounding areas and why they should be there. Definitely. The rumors are true, but we, we never did an event in Dallas. We have never, and that's rare. We've done events all over the country. So I know it's going to be a, you know, a wonderful weekend. And, you know, when all the fraternities and sororities get together, they, they do such impactful work in our communities, right? As far as adding a financial uh, literacy element to this great weekend, I think is extremely beneficial. We combine the fun aspect with the education. That's called edutainment is what we call it. Now you you, you create a, a platform where people are actually eager to learn because they know it's not just boring going to the classroom. You're going to fall asleep. You're going to have fun. You're going to have your stomp competitions. So it's a complete 360 package. Check them out in Dallas, Fort Worth, April the 12th, the kickoff Stomp Wars weekend, stompwars.com. Get your tickets now. Get your weekend passes now because you know – EYL coming to town and they're going to shut it down. Make sure you follow Earn Your Leisure on social media and continue to enhance your financial literacy. Thank you guys, man. We wish you guys the best success. Continue to do what you're doing in our community and worldwide. Thank, thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. We got more Ricky Smiley Morning Show coming up. Pimping. Pimping. 